everybody. My name is Annette Lawless and I'm an investigative reporter here at Cake News in Wichita, Kansas. And there's this big story that has been making nationwide headlines that I want to catch you up on because I've been looking deeply into this case of two missing women. I'm leaving our new studio now kind of loud here and wanted to give you this update on what I know about this situation because there's just been so much interest in the case of Veronica and Jillian. So Veronica Butler, Jillian Kelly, as you know, two women who went missing from Hugoton, Kansas. So Southwest Kansas, last seen on Saturday, they were going to go and grab Veronica's kids to take them to a birthday celebration, but they never made it to getting to the kids. The kids I'm told they're okay, no people at risk, but Veronica and Jillian are still missing. And the part that's really peculiar, of course, about all things, if you've been following the headlines here, is that the vehicle they were in, Veronica's vehicle, was found in this rural area on the road um, over in the, across the state line into Northwest Oklahoma, so the Panhandle area. Um, just super rural area. I was looking at Google Maps, trying to navigate through that part of the state. And I was like, gosh, you know, what had happened? What went on with their disappearance? And so we're entering day four and people are asking what's going on. I have a lot of people asking questions. I did get a chance, if you looked at my videos on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and a, a conversation with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. And they told me, you know, basically all of the, the kind of the, what we call the nuts and bolts, like those just simple facts of, you know, last seen Saturday, vehicle over on this rural part of the state, all these different things. I've had some follow-up conversations with the OSBI to see well, what's going on and are people at risk? And there's other things that have taken place too. One, I'm told that the community is not at risk, at least from the OSBI and their perspective. I will say that the school district, so there's a school not too far from where their vehicle was found. They did go on basically like a lockdown situation. So they have it basically schools going on and everything, but they're not letting people kind of like in and out of the building sort of situation. Lockout is maybe the best way to phrase it. Um, they're just taking as much of a precaution um, with the situation there just to make sure that everyone's safe. Um, and that's certainly understandable, but certainly it's raised some eyebrows as to what's happened and people just asking even more questions. You know, I did, when I talked to the OSBI about this case, I asked, you know, is there a threat to the community? How was the vehicle found? All these other questions that have popped up a lot on social media. Again, no threat to the community. They didn't elaborate as to how the vehicle was found other than it was found. And they didn't elaborate on specifics with the you know, the relationship of these ladies and going to the area. The church, one of their churches has said that basically the women are acquaintances um, and one was just going to support the other. I found some interesting information online and working to confirm it, but really we can all report certain things that are relevant to an investigation and things that we can confirm um, that would be valid to share with the public. There's been a lot of speculation as for um, Veronica and her ex and what has happened with you know, the custody of their kids and their relationship and, you know, things that he's faced um, and, and everything legally and such and criminally, if there is anything to focus on there. And there's nothing that I can share with you today about that because nothing, at least from what I'm told, speaking to investigators from, and I've spoken to, you know, contacted Hugoton Police, the Texas County Sheriff's Office, where the, the county where the vehicle was found and the OSBI, which is the lead and pretty much is where I need to go to with a case like this. And, you know, nothing that I've asked about has, they, they say nothing is pertinent to the investigation or nothing they can confirm with the investigation. But I will say the OSBI has been very um, good with us with getting details almost instantly. If I contact them, I get as much information as they can share pretty quickly. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, certainly a case that a lot of people have their eyes on, but I wanted to share at least this perspective with you of what I'm doing. And I'm working on stuff every day, um, reaching out to different people and just trying trying to give you all the very latest and make this story, at, at least for me as an advocate for missing people, as I've shared you know, thousands of stories with missing in Kansas over the past six years, um, keeping a story in the headlines is really important to closing a case. And 
these women are so fortunate to have so many people. I mean, they had a vigil this week. They've had people at their churches and within this community of about what, not even 4,000 people. I mean, just really rallying around them, trying to figure out what happened to them and if they're okay, making sure that other people in the community are okay. We're gonna stay on top of this. I have a few more phone calls I'd like to make today and in the coming days, hopefully I don't even have to make them. I'd love to see a resolution with this case as soon as possible, but I just wanted to let you know what I'm working on with this. And if you do have questions, feel free to share them with me and any comments on any of the social media threads that you're seeing this video on. You know, I try to answer things as best I can. Um, again, I can only share what we can confirm and things that are really relevant to the investigation. A lot of chatter on the internet certainly right now um, but again if we can keep that conversation going I think that's just the most important thing because I think for Jillian and Veronica their families they just want to find them and they want to bring them home safe I appreciate you all um, being with me with this candid conversation here about my perspective as a storyteller and hopefully you can keep sharing this story whether it's this video other things that you see online but just keep in mind though some of the stuff that you see on social media may not be the most accurate or it may be a smidge of the truth and so I just think it's really important to lean on journalists like myself we go through this vetting process we want to make sure things are accurate and fair and that's what I'm trying to do here, being as transparent as I can about this investigation that's really captured the heart of so many. I appreciate you being here today.